Oh, well, I think that feeling of being overwhelmed as a parent is so prevalent uh, nowadays, and it's, it's one that I can relate to um, a lot with the two little ones in my life. Um, and what I would say is, I, I think too often we think of this as a very compartmentalized area of life. And to know that as we are talking and teaching about healthy sexuality and, and the body and, and relationships, that we are, we are covering so many other areas of parenting. We, when we're engaged in those type of honest, frank discussions, we're building bonds and relationships with, with our child. We are affecting the atmosphere in our home for good. We are buffering them and protecting them from things like abuse, from pornography. We know that children that are taught well about healthy sexuality in the home are, have more protection on their side when it comes to threats to healthy sexuality, such as pornography or abuse. And so to know that, we, I just know it's so wonderful for me as a mom when I find out, really, I can do this one thing and it kills, you know, <laughs> not kills, but... It, the domino it, it, effect. Right, it, it can cover so many bases. It's just such a relief for me as a mom. Right. And so I would want other parents to know that too, that focusing on this and making it a priority in the home will cover many bases that you'll want to cover anyway as a parent. Excellent. I think particularly as kids get older, it's good to remind ourselves they want to have these conversations. They feel some of the anxiousness too, definitely if they sense that a parent or leader is anxious about it. But they really want to have these conversations. I think sometimes we, we talk down to our youth a little bit. We, we kind of, uh, we, we, don't, we don't have the straight conversations with them that they so desperately want. I've been asking a lot of young adults uh, in, in my classes and, and over the years to tell me about how they learned about topics like sexuality and, and, and chastity and intimacy. And I've been amazed over the years how many of them tell me about lessons that involved object lessons. So I've been intrigued so much, I've started a collection. And so I'm collecting <laughs> all of these stories of object lessons. But without a fail, when I ask them, what did you learn from that object lesson? And there's a whole range. We don't have time to go into it. it they're, they're amazing, the creativity that's out there. But without fail, every single one of them said, I felt my parent, I felt my seminary teacher, I felt my bishopric counselor wouldn't talk about it straight. We could talk about cupcakes, we could talk about uh, uh, flowers, we could talk about, you know, whatever was the object lesson of the time, but we couldn't talk about it straight. Mm -hmm. And it left them feeling like they weren't seen as mature enough to handle these things or to deal with them, but they are dealing with them and they need the maturity. So in some ways, when we will have these conversations, we instill in them a confidence that we believe that you're capable to, to handle this. We believe that you're growing up, that you can be mature, that we can talk about these things directly. So I guess my advice to the parent would be is, I, there's a relationship reward mm -hmm. on the other side of that. And there might be some initial awkwardness, and Jill said, my experience with awkwardness, it's best to just be transparent and just say, if I have any nervousness, it's because of how much I love you. It's because of how much I want this to be a wonderful part of your life and how much I worry about the things that are out there, right, that, that can be there for you. But you might feel a little anxious, I wanna feel it, but my, let, let's talk about this enough to where we're not anxious. Mm -hmm. That alone, uh, will, there will be a relationship reward as, as we push through that, and then they'll turn to us rather than to others.